Hello everyone, have you ever tried to install the Recorders app and been confused when nothing happens? Or are you a regular user who only ever downloads other folks' Recorders from Wago but you wish you could customise them? Or maybe you fancy trying to create one of your own but don't know where to start? Well if that's you, this video should be for you. As well as giving a complete beginner's guide to recorders too, I'm also going to run through a couple of examples of creating a basic recorder from scratch. Now if the idea of doing that feels a bit daunting, definitely don't be put off. Recorders actually makes it very easy to create surprisingly sophisticated orders with just a simple point and click user interface. Now, if you already know about the Recorders add-on and just want the guide to create an orders, do feel free to skip ahead. I do have the bookmaps in the timeline. Recorders 2 is what I like to think of as a platform add-on. What that means is that it provides a framework that can be used to plug additional functionality into it. If you use Handy Notes, it's a similar idea. The basic Handy Notes add-on doesn't actually do much on its own, but if you add in the Dragonfly extension for Handy Notes, all of a sudden, there's icons everywhere on your maps. Now, the one difference with Recorders is that its extensions aren't also add-ons that you download from Cursebores, but Recorders actually uses a completely separate system that it's designed for its own use. Now, what those extensions basically do is track stuff in-game for you and then display it in a highly customised way. It is possible to automate stuff with recorders, but that isn't really what the tool is designed for and certainly not something I'm going to be covering in this video. So, now you've downloaded recorders and installed it, nothing much happening, so what do you do next? Well, the best starting place is to go to waggle.io and I'll have a link down in the description for that below. This is a website where recorder creators share their orders. There's a huge number of orders out there for tracking just about anything you could ever want. So how do you get them into recorders? Well, once you find your recorder, you just hit the copy uh, import string on the website, and then you go to the recorders in game, hit the import button, and you paste it there, and that's basically it. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what recorders can do, I would certainly suggest having a good dig around Wago. But the most common uses for recorders are head up displays. That, these are things that display your character's rotational cooldowns on the screen. This is my own recorder that I made for Protection Paladin. If that's of interest to you, I'd also recommend Luxthos recorders. I'll put links to both down below. Luxthos had recorder packs for every class in game, and there's several other authors out there that do the same. The other common use is to track things in raid in dungeons. Now, I personally use add-on packs by a creator called Cozy, and again, I'll put a link in that down below. Now, you're probably used to using an add-on manager to help keep your add-ons up to date. Well, Recorders also has the Recorders companion app, which does the same thing. This is an app that you can download and install on your PC, and it will track the status of any orders you've installed and will display them in the Recorders add-on when they go out of date and give you an icon in that add-on where you can just click to pull the update in for you. It makes it nice and easy to keep them up to date. Anyways, that's recorders. Now it's time to delve into creating a new recorder. So imagine you've been leveling away and you've got a useful food buff and then two hours pass and you realize you forgot to refresh that buff. Super annoying. I've honestly got a head like a sieve and I do this all the time when I'm leveling. If only there was a way I could be reminded. Well, it turns out you can. This is pretty much an ideal thing to use a recorder for. Okay, so the first thing we want to do to get started is click on the new aura option. That gives up this page of basically different types of auras that you can create. So I'm going to select the icon type here. This will show an icon on screen for my week aura and I always find that about 99% of the time this is the one I want to use because showing icons are really useful visually. So we'll hit that. And then what I want to do is to go to the trigger section. Now, this section here is where we set up what we want the order to track. Uh, the reason it's called a trigger is because it also controls when the order will display on screen or not. So it's a bit of a two in one thing. Now, the thing I'm going to be tracking is this particular buff up here, which is called well fed, but you could use any buff. Now, because it's a buff, I want to select the type here of Aura. Aura is essentially anything that modifies your character. So that's buffs, debuffs, all that kind of thing. And it's on a character, so it's player. 
and then we're going to track a buff. Now, the easiest way is to just put the name of the buff, which is well fed, into this section here. But when I hover over it, you'll see it's selecting a lot of different ones. Now, I don't actually want it to do that. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, the ID of the buff. Now, in LVUI, handily shows the ID in the tooltip. But there are other add-ons out there that do similar things. For example, um, All The Things has an option you can enable to get it to do the same thing. So the ID is 396092. So we'll get rid of this and we'll go here and we'll put 396092 in here. There we go. And it's a well-fed, so I know it's the right thing. And if I close that out there, we've now got that down there. So that's actually our first week order. Now, when you, you can just drag them about when you have this page open, which makes it really useful. And let's give it a decent name. So over this side, we'll call it Yummy. There we go. So we've now given it a name like that. So the only problem with this is it's showing on screen. And that, of course, is not what I want. I want a reminder when it's not active. So that's actually quite easy to change. Going into the trigger section, there's this show on section down here. And you'll see it says orders found. So if I set that to order missing, lo and behold, it's gone now. But if I right click it off, it's back. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? That's as easy as that to create a weak order. Now, I personally think this weak order could be a lot more useful if it also gave me a cool down. Maybe say a, a like one minute cool down when it's about to expire. Well, we can't really do it with this particular setup here, but one of the things we call us does is it allows you to have multiple triggers. So let's create another trigger for the countdown that will activate when it's less than uh, 60 seconds left. So we'll do add trigger. Now, as soon as I've done that, you'll see this section up here says required for activation all triggers. Now that's not what I want. I want it to be an either or when any of the triggers are active. So if it's not there or if the cooldown is in the last 60 seconds. So we'll change this to any triggers, which means either of those will cause it to be active. And again, it's order player buff and it's a spell ID. So the spell ID was 396092. So we'll go here, 396092. There we go. Got the same well fed buff. And this time I'm going to set this remaining time here and we'll set it to basically we want it to activate when it's less than 60 seconds. So we'll do that. We'll take it out. Now, of course, I'm going to have to eat again because I don't have the buff. So let's eat up. And when I do this, you'll see it will disappear. Uh, now, that's not super helpful in this case because I kind of want to test that my setup is working correctly. But an easy kind of trick I can use is I can just go in here and I can temporarily increase this to one minute. There we go. And if I get rid of this, it, now it's staying on screen. Excellent. Now, obviously, in the real world, I'll change that back to 60. But before I do that, I'm going to make another couple of changes. So something I'd kind of like to do with this week order is to make it a lot more obvious when it's completely dropped off versus when it's just the last 60 seconds counting down. And what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to go to the display section here and I'm going to go down to this glow section here. And if I turn show glow on with action button glow, you'll now see it's got a nice glow. It's really obvious. And I actually do this a lot with my week orders just to make them a bit in the face. I think it's generally a good thing to do with reminder ones. Um, so now it's got, that's orange, but what if I wanted it to be red when the timer has completely run out? Well, this is where the conditions tab comes in. What conditions basically do is they allow you to modify the state of an active week order to make it change based on different things happening. So what I want to do in this case is to make the week order turn red or more accurately, the glow around the outside when the timer runs out completely and the buff drops off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit add condition here. And then the condition I want is to go to trigger one. So trigger one is the order that happens when the debuff drops off and say, if the trigger one is active, 
So we'll set that to true. So it's when it's active. Then what we want to do is we want to go to glow one. That was the glow that we set up. And we know the glow is visible, but what I actually want to do is to do a couple of things. I first want to set a custom color and we'll turn that to red, okay? And then we need to do another change, which is to go back into glow one. And we want to change, we want to go to use custom color and turn this on. And that tells it to use the custom color. And then it goes red like that. So what we can now do is we can give it a bit of a test. So there we are, it's yellow because the buff's still there. Click it off and it turns red. So there you go. That's a fairly simple wee corner. It didn't take very long to do. I didn't need any programming skills. I just needed to know a little bit of my way around weak orders and that's quite a nice functional thing I've got all set up there. So the last thing of course I would do to make this work in the real world is we change this back to 60 seconds so we've got our time out and then when we pop it off it's there, we eat up and just to prove it to you once I eat up as soon as I finish then you've got the buff you'll see it disappear. Now, the only downside of this particular week order is that it will apply to all characters. And this means it will show even the max level characters, which if you remember, the goal of this was a leveling buff tracker. So I don't really want that to happen in my max level characters, but that's easy to fix by using the load tab. Now, what the load tab does is it controls when week orders are active and are actually monitoring your character and trying to decide when to show or not and when they're completely inactive. And when a week order is completely inactive, it uses less resources. So it's always good practice to set this up appropriately. And in this case, what I want to do is I want to say is the player level setting here. And then I want to say that if the player is equal to level 70, the maximum level, then that would mean it was only active at max level. But of course, I actually want it to be the opposite and when it's not max level, so I'll change this to less than. So now it's saying only be active on a character that's below 70. And when I close it now, the icon disappears again because I'm on a max level character. Okay, so that was a pretty like simple example, but let's take another example. How about an example where let's say I'm not used to playing a protection paladin. I'm again, I'm living my best life. And all of a sudden I'm realizing I'm not using wings. And wings is really important in the protection paladin's rotation because it gives a ton more damage. That's a bit embarrassing. What I need is a reminder to do that every time it's not in cooldown. So let's see if we can do that. So let's see what we can do in that front. So let's take a new order. And it's going to be another icon one because I want another icon. Let's see it and we'll call it wings. So what are we going to track this time? Well, this time I want to know if a spell is in cooldown. So this is obviously not the right option. Um, there's nothing in here about spells, but if we go up to here, okay, so we do a spell. And I want to actually, yeah, I want to track a cooldown and cooldown. There we go. So again, we'll move this on the screen. Happy days. And again, I want to make this kind of really pre prominent. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to turn the show glow on. There we go. It's just me. I like my glows. And that's pretty straightforward. And actually, you'll see if I hit F3 here, it goes away. Okay, that's a two minute cooldown. So bear with me a little bit until that comes back. There we go. Happy days. The only thing about this is I'm not going to use Avenging Wrath when I'm not in combat, right? So that's kind of annoying. But that's easily fixed. Because if you remember, go over here, we can say in combat. And there you go, it will only ever appear when I'm in combat. And we can actually, we'll just run out of here and we'll just see it in action. So let's actually see if I can find something to get into a bit of a fight on. Yeah, this wee guy here, 
he's living his best life. Let's be a bit mean to him. There we go. Hit my wings. And there we go. Gone. And there we go. Well, I hope this video has been able to demystify wee corners for you and perhaps even inspired you to have a try at making your own. I do have one last piece of advice, and that is if you're creating a wee corner, which is to regularly save your work. You can do this by right clicking your aura, hitting the export icon, taking a copy of this text screen and putting it in a text document. If anything goes wrong, you can then just delete the order and re-import it. And if you're modifying an existing order, it's easy to delete it and re-import it from Waggle. But once you have made some progress on that, I still do recommend saving it into a document as you go. Now, if you have any questions or just want to share your own tips and tricks for making weak orders, please do comment down below. And if you found this video even vaguely useful, do please let me know by hitting the like icon. And if you'd like to support my channel or even just be notified whenever a new video goes live, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. That's all for now and I will see you all again soon.